To talk a little bit more about that is Andrei Dobryansky, the spokesperson for the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Thank you once again for being with us, Andrei. Uh, over the weekend, uh, President Putin issuing an order for the country's nuclear deterrence forces to be at a level of, quote, special combat readiness. What does that mean? Uh, it's posturing by Putin. Obviously, uh, what we've heard of him in public speeches, even in his public meetings with his officials, he, he's looking more and more detached from the reality of the situation. If we listen to what he has ordered his diplomats, whether it's those in the United Nations or different countries to speak, it's clearly detached from the situation on the ground. So uh, it's posturing by, by, by Vladimir Putin in terms of warning other countries not to get involved. But due to the fact that he's becoming less and less attached to what's actual reality. We don't know if that means that he might do something even worse than what he's already done. And the White House is saying in response that they're not going to be changing their tactics at all in dealing with this crisis. Do you think that that's a mistake? Oh, no, no, no. What the United States has been doing and the rest of the world is what is need to be done with Putin for years. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, let me uh, take it back to the uh, problems in Syria, the crisis that happened there. Uh, there was a point at which a Russian jet decided that they could fly over Turkey uh, for a period of 18 seconds. They were over Turkish air, airspace and that jet was shot down immediately. There were no further repercussions, no nuclear war with Turkey. Uh, so we know that Putin, even though, you know, he might have delusions of grandeur we know that if you attack his forces directly and show the dominance of your own army he's not going to you know automatically go to nuclear war what needs to happen is a strong firm united stance by the rest of the world and that's what's happening today andre i know that you're very right in on the history that we're t dealing with here and for a lot of people they think that this is just a, his delusions of grandeur to restore the former soviet union but it goes very deep there are religious implications here between the ukrainian church and the russian russian orthodox church there are the ideas that Ukrainians are denouncing their Russian heritage and that somehow he's something he's taken personally. Can you just speak to our audience about why exactly for Putin uh, this fight is very personal? Well, uh, yes, he has claimed for many years uh, from the beginning of his presidency in 2000, which I should mention also was the beginning of his assassinations of political opponents, both in Europe and, and within Russia. Uh, but then at the 2000 Munich Security Conference, 2007, uh, he detailed completely the fact that Ukraine is not a real country. This is something that has been spoken by Russian Tsars, Russian uh, Soviet premiers uh, during their reign. So he's just continuing that long legacy of, of a colonial mindset that these aren't a real people and they're not deserving of, of recognition. I think the main thing that people should understand is how Putin might the international order. Uh, look how he pre-taped an announcement that he's declaring war and launched missiles during a Security Council meeting, at which, as far as we know, he didn't even tell his ambassador at the UN who is chairing the Security Council that he's doing that. He's trying to disrupt the entire way we do things with international treaties, most of which international treaties don't have a penalty system if you're not in line with them. So he's just demonstrating that, look, we can all get away with this. If we want to not be involved with uh, peaceful relations, we can all break every single treaty because nobody's going to do anything about it. And that's why you see ambassadors from all over the world and country leaders from all over the world saying, you know what, we may not have chosen our borders, but we at least have the dignity to respect our neighbor to not invade them, even if our ethnic people are, are on both sides of the border. That's the real tragedy here, that Putin is telling the word, world that you don't need to listen to any international agreements anymore. And we will find out exactly what the penalty will be for that. Uh, Andre Dobriansky, thank you so much uh, for your time uh, this morning and always. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.